Welcome to the third in this series of Sports Science Careers Tutorials brought to you by SportsScienceTutor.com. In this tutorial we're looking at breaking into the strength and conditioning industry and strength and conditioning is an area which has a very competitive jobs market and it's something that a lot of sports science graduates want to break into. With that in mind, it's imperative that the prospective strength and conditioning coach makes every attempt to stand out from the crowd. And you can do this through one of two ways, really. Firstly, through networking, trying to build up a big network of contacts so you, in essence, become a name within the field. And you can achieve that through attending conferences and speaking to the de delegates and presenters reaching out to coaches and asking for shadowing opportunities. That's going to represent a really useful learning opportunity as well as a networking opportunity. And this day and age as well means we can use social media in order to network with uh, prominent coaches within the field. On the flip side of the coin, we can try and stand out from the crowd by developing a specialised skill set. So if we can develop an advanced level of expertise in an area related to strength and conditioning, then that should make us more valuable in the eyes of prospective employers. And this could be in a whole range of different areas, whether it be strength diagnostics, working with disabled athletes, recovery and regeneration methods, maybe becoming an expert in the use of strength training as a rehabilitation tool uh, with injured athletes, or numerous other areas as well. But if we're going to go down the route of developing expertise within a specific area related to strength and conditioning, then postgraduate study probably remains the best means of facilitating this. Until a few years ago, there were very few MSc courses available in strength and conditioning. And so obtaining an MSc degree in strength and conditioning was a viable means of actually standing out from the crowd. In the last few years, though, there's been an absolute explosion in the number of MSc degrees available in strength and conditioning. And so you could argue it no longer represents a a really good means of differentiating yourself from all the other prospective strength and conditioning coaches out there. Alternatively, if we want to develop that specialized level of expertise in a particular area of strength and conditioning, then maybe a um, postgraduate course in biomechanics would be more suitable, for example, if we wanted to become an authority on strength diagnostics. If we wanted to become an expert in recovery and regeneration methods, then perhaps postgraduate study in physiology would be the best route towards achieving this. Or if we wanted to become the authority in rehabbing athletes through the use of strength training following injury, then an MSc in sports rehabilitation could well be the way to go. Of course, on top of that, we're going to need accreditation. And in the United Kingdom, the UKSA accreditation is pretty much imperative. If we're more interested in working abroad than in the America, the NSCA qualification, the CSCS certification is still something that holds a lot of weight. Over in Australia, the Australian Strength and Conditioning Association have their own certification. And again, on the theme of developing expertise within a specialised area of strength and conditioning, the IYCA certifications might facilitate uh, that objective with respect to working with youth populations. And if you want mentoring towards achieving these accreditations, then you may be interested in mentor over at sportsciencetutor.com.